one of the most difficult things that organizations have to deal with today is the ability to forecast the future. So, so deciding what direction to go requires um, a much more rigorous and intense process today than ever before. Today, with exponential technologies, we see the convergence across different industries present the biggest threats and the biggest opportunities to a business. And unless there's a process or a mindset and the right people and the skill sets, you'll completely miss what may be the most important element to your future business. So when an organization recognizes a shift in the future that's coming and, and they have the, the courage and vision to take a new path, uh, it's often met with skepticism and disbelief ab ab about that future being possible, that they're capable of transforming, and that it's even relevant in, in, in many cases. So one of the things that we try to help organizations do first is have a perspective around technology and exponential technologies, and then build in processes to constantly track and be aware of the, the trends, the potential opportunities and threats that are arising, but then also a process to forecast that exponential curve out on longer term horizons and build scenarios of possible um, future states, so both positive and negative, um, that then, then the organization can, can plan towards going forward which is a little bit different. That, that, that long-term thinking and, and, and strategic planning on those kinds of time horizons are, are pretty unusual for, for, for organizations or governments when our entire focus is typically this quarter's uh, earning statement um, or you have a one-year plan or maybe a five-year plan. Harman is largely an audio business, but their biggest business unit is, is the infotainment system of, of automobiles and, and cars. So the computer systems, the navigation systems, the, the sound systems of, of vehicles. Um, and with autonomous cars coming online, that, that poses a major threat because the future car is actually a computer system with wheels and other technologies versus the cars of today, which are more the, the, the hardware and the... the, the uh, the steering systems with computers embedded in them. So it's a complete flip of, of, of the business. And, and so Harman had, had the vision of seeing what was coming, right? they forecast far, farther out as recognizing that autonomous cars are going to happen. Maybe not inevitably, but pretty determined that that is gonna be a major impact on the industry. And Harman's business is gonna to have to adapt dramatically if it wants to survive in that future business. So it ended up being an end-to-end -end transformation of the business, rebranding, restructuring, new businesses, uh, new business units in cybersecurity and information software that transformed what the company was like. And along the way, we had to educate our investor base, our partners, our sales clients as to why we were transforming the business. And that vision for the autonomous future three or four years ago was the rest of the industry was oblivious to that future. They had heard about the Google car, they'd seen these things, but there was a disbelief that that future was going to be real. And the challenge for, for our business was that even if it's a low probability that that future could, be, could come to form, it would have major consequences, in fact, existential consequences on the business. And so it was worth the effort to transform because even if that didn't come to form the way that we saw it happening, which it has already, um, we'd at least be ahead of the game on the technology side and the software side. So we would at least be um, leading the industry in, uh, relative to what everyone else is doing. So, so one of the challenges that I think I've seen at Singularity University working with many different companies is that most companies see these technologies. They see the possibility of disruption, but they don't know what to do about it, or they see a path, but it's so difficult, and the CEO is so close to retirement that it doesn't make sense to do it. And in my experience with Harman, seeing that the public market did not really reward us for 
that visionary innovation work, I have, to, I have to question whether the incentives are aligned in the public market system for long-term resiliency, because the public market is only rewarding short-term gains as well. Big challenge. Now, there are a few companies that are playing a different game. Amazon, Tesla, for example, they're, they're not competing. Their, their investor base has bought onto the long-term vision. They don't care about the short-term returns. They've bought onto the long-term vision. The challenge is an a company with 100 years of history has existing investors that you have to transform their mindset to get them on that future vision, which is a really difficult task. So my experience with Harman was that the uh, vision that we had was um, so different than what our current investor base believed in that maybe the best path forward would be to go private and then go public again with a new investor base with a new vision for what we were going to do going forward. That's a really difficult process for, for companies to endeavor. And, and if you look at other organizations, one of the most recent examples is GE. GE over the past eight years put a lot of effort into transforming its business into a more digitized, information-based uh, uh, company. I believe a lot of the work that GE did built long-term resiliency for that business. They actually did some of the fundamental work to allow them to exist for a much longer period of time into the future. Uh, they are a strong hardware business, but it needs to be integrated with the data systems and the information systems that, that they have basically built over the last several years. Unfortunately, the short-term-minded public market is not getting rewarded for that long-term vision. And so they punish GE. Right? And, and the CEO gets booted, and now the new CEO, his only incentive is around shareholder value, which means he has no incentive to think long-term. Big problem. This is a big problem. And so, so I believe the public market system has, has a distinct misalignment with long-term thinking. So one of the challenges that Harman had was history. The Har Harman had almost 100 years of history of the leading edge innovation around audio, uh, audio technologies, the first speakers for the talking movies, the first FM tuner, all of these amazing technologies. Um, and, and the business was largely built around those technologies. And so, so it ended up being a pretty vertically oriented business. So there was a uh, consumer division that made headphones and audio receivers for the home. There was an auto uh, business that's largely focused on infotainment and computer systems. Uh, there was a, um, a professional services business that's focused on bringing big industrial scale audio systems into conference halls and, 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 and um, uh, uh, big uh, buildings. And the challenge is when you start to overlay information systems and data systems, and digitize this business, it cuts across all of those different sectors. And, and so with Harman, we, we ended up uh, acquiring uh, software services businesses, cybersecurity businesses, some other things that, that were very applicable to the, to the different businesses. And we had to integrate and, and sort of restructure the in, entire business to think end-to-end -end solutions, no longer product-specific, but solution-specific. And that is, many companies go through this transformation, but it is probably one of the hardest ones for an organization to do in this, in this effort to digitize. Uh, because it does mean the products you sell, the skill sets you need, the people, the, the, the structure of how you um, uh, organize and, and run the business, they're all slightly different. And, and that's, a, that's a big effort for any organization to undergo.